In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, most excellent, I took refuge until enlightenment is reached. By the merit of John Rasri and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for say all sentient beings. <laughs> Sentient beings, boundless as sky, have happiness in the cause of the happiness. May they be liberated from suffering in the cause of the suffering. May they never be separated from happiness that is free from sorrow. May the rest of the free from attachment and aversion. It's your supplication to Lord Jesus on page 16. <coughs> <coughs> ornament of the world. You found the privilege in 3,000 world. You are the victor Vajradara without doubt. Bow to the feet in the Father Jignesam God. Continue, I think, no one but you. Compassionate one you create your blessings. This when the darkness has thrown my heart. Please bless your meat. I realize and liberate the nature of the mind. Then short uh, mandala also. Shadow Mandala, page 28. <laughs> Thank you. 
Scenting water, the stain of the flowers. It is done with the Meru, the supreme mountain, and the four kindness, and the sun and the moon, as the Buddha fit are offer it. The owls and chimbings attend the happiness of the Buddha field. To the lamas who the possess three kayas, I offer the outer, inner, and the secret offerings, with my body, well, and all visible. Please grant me supreme realization and enlightenment. Whatever matter I have the three prostrations, offering, compassion, rejoicing, blessing, pray, in the enlightenment, all sentient beings, all this I dedicate. Om Guru Ndewanda Agin Rana Mandala Bhattisa Sohova. Om Please turn the wheel of the Dharma of the two eagle and their combination according to the disposition likewise the mental capacity of the sentient beings. First, please uh, relax yourself physically, mentally, and take a deep breath, inhale fully. and release all our physical and mental tension. Just relax. And once more, please inhale fully all the loving kindness, compassion of the Buddha. Permit our body and mind and exhale. Please inhale once more all the wisdom bodhicitta of all the Buddhas and heal our mind, pervade our entire mind and release all our negativities or delusions. Exhale. Then 
with this we'll do the uh, guru yoga that brings the dhammakaya onto the, onto the path vajadara lama embodiment of the three jewels i take refuge in you and will until i attain enlightenment Sentient beings, victim of the confused projection suffering. I generate the mindset for enlightenment in order to establish you all in the non-abiding state. Vajadara Lama, embodiment of the three jewels, I take refuge in you and will until I attain enlightenment. Sentient beings, victim of confused projection suffering. I generate the mindset for enlightenment in order to establish you all in the non-abiding state. Vajadara Lama, embodiment of the three jewels, I take refuge in you and will until I attain enlightenment. Sentient beings, victim of confused projection suffering, I generate the mindset for enlightenment in order to establish you all in the non-abiding state. And visualization, establishing that. Lord Vajradhara Jigdhya Sungun, you sit on the seat of the 10 strengths, four fearlessnesses, and 18 unmixed dharma, dharmas. Your major and minor marks of love, compassion, and bodhicitta, radiate rays of light and your non-conceptual enlightened activities reach to all sentient, all sentient beings or my creator equally. Um,
Kaleşen ob nahar cuna da piyales rana şiri. Lord çıktın sungun ayısabı ket yu. Yu adı budas nagakun nagakula paradipa en devamkara of the past. Maitra of the future and hegemony of the present. The reincarnation of nahar cuna da piyales rana şiri. Lord çıktın sungun ayısabı ket yu. You are the Buddha's Nagakula Pratipa and the Bankara of the past, Maitra of the future, and the Shakyamuni of the present. The reincarnation of Nagarjuna, the peerless Ranashiri, Lord Chitna Sungun, I supplicate you. Light rays emanate from the Lama's body, speech, and mind, and dissolve into my four places thereby purifying the four obscurations, destroying the four impairments, and planting the seed of the four kayas. The Lama then dissolved into myself, and my mind is now natural luminosity, emptiness. Okay, use my laptop instead. Education through both the innate virtue and the virtue accumulated in the three times by all in samsara and nirvana. May I and all session beings fill in space, none left out, realize the non a co emergent ultimate reality, and attain the final state of non abidance in existence or peace. Hello, everybody. <laughs> good morning, good good evening, <laughs> good everything. <laughs> uh, okay. Now uh, we are so fortunate to have one day to reflect on these precious Dharma teachings. As you know, the Dharma teaching is the wisdom of the Buddha. Uh, just to reflect our purpose of this. Uh, all our purpose, making effort on this, is to free from all the suffering that surrounds us in our daily life, in the samsara. You know? And we all desire for peace and happiness. You know? It's universal. It's not a religious belief. It's, it's, it's not just a culture, but it's, we should say it's the culture of the samsara. And regarding to this, 
then to we everybody make effort how to free from suffering and how to how to bring the peace and happiness in our life that everybody's interest and everybody's focus on this sometimes we want to become famous to be happy sometimes we want to collect a lot of wealth for happiness sometimes we go around different places here and there to be happy sometimes we go to retreat isolate yourself to be free from suffering to have peace and happiness but in the now at the end of the day all the effort what we met is focusing on this uh, optimal goal you know? so because of this we need to cultivate the mind to all the sentient beings we individual are one individual one person sentient beings are limitless as you can see in the wall just look at the a nest of ant how many ants are there hundreds of thousands of millions of ants there they keep busy because they want peace and happiness they keep busy to free from suffering so say, we have the same interest directly or indir- indirectly you no know? so as we as a, hu- as a human being not just only human beings those who have this precious human life which is 18 Oh, uh, it says Carl. Eighteen good qualities, and has interest in the study and practice of the teachings. So we cultivate the mind to everybody's interest, that free from suffering and have peace and happiness, and to attain to complete enlightenment. the reason because the mind is such a powerful the mind nature is unfathomable it's so vast as the space space has no limit you can fly in the rocket now from the east to all the way and you cannot find now the the fringe of the space the sky after all the rocket will the rocket will return because the rocket is exhausted so likewise the mind our mind has such you no know, profound this we should understand that you know our physical body is very limited mm-hmm. uh, the mind is unlimited so buddha who realized this reality nature you know, seeing the complexity of the ascension pains but the thought of the dharma teachings as yesterday we went through the second batch of statement but the talked at 4000 types of categories the teachings the doors of the teachings is all are taught to to solve the problem the puzzles of the mind the mental afflictions are such now say to powerful you know when the mind is in the wrong place overpowered by the mental mental afflictions delusions we are under the control of that power 
and our suffering is so immense. So to free from this Buddha's teaching is the totally relevant and taught for that. So therefore, we are so fortunate to have this opportunity to study, practice this Dharma teaching. You know. As I mentioned, it's not just a religious interest. It's not just our belief system in the religion, but this is something that to solve the puzzle of the mind. You know. Even you see, you know, the, all the modern scientists, great scientists are working hard, but has very limited resource on this. Mostly they're focused on the outer matter. You know, so like, you, as you have you heard of like that, no? The black hole, big bang, you know, all those things, you know, try to measure the space but it's very limited, you see, because the, the outer matter cannot measure the unfathomable mind. The mind can measure by the mind. And Buddha has done that, measured that, you know, for many lifetimes, especially his own life, going to retreat for six, seven years, oh, totally dedicated in that. And finally, he solved all the puzzles of the mind. And then he said, now I'm enlightened. I found the final matter, the undefiled ambrosia. So from that state, then with such that kind of wisdom and out of compassion taught all those teachings, giving this wisdom to all the sentient beings. Uh, as I mentioned repeatedly, this Buddhist teaching is not just only for Buddhists. You know? These teachings are taught for every sentient beings because there's no limit, there's no boundary. Mm -hmm. this wisdom has no, no boundary. So that's the conjit that what Buddha taught, the complete teaching, very comprehensive of those Buddha's teachings brought into this conjit called the such, uh, precious teaching in this. Oh, so we should have that kind of wisdom. So all those teachings, not just some Buddhist great teachers, individuals view, this is the complete view of the Buddha. The, so complete view of the Buddha that described in this context. So in the Kongji, when you study, you cannot compare with some individuals, intellectual masters. We have to total compare to Buddha. But at the same time, these some great teachers, when they taught, you know, then we bring quotations because it's relevant. It's related to the Buddha's teaching, the mode of abiding, you know, the innate disposition or the complete nature of the reality. You know? uh, so um, yesterday I went through three virtual statements that the 84,000, what Buddha talked is to solve the puzzle of the 84,000 types of mental afflictions. And the second is the three Pitakas, the four Tantras, stage of Tantras are taught step by step to follow you know, the path. You know, the Vinaya, three Pitaka, the Vinaya Pitaka, 
the Sutra Pitaka and Abhidhamma Praka Pitaka, the, basket, the three baskets of the teachings. And Action Tantra, uh, then this, uh, no, the Activities Tantra, the Action Tantra, and Yoga Tantra, and Highest Yoga Tantra is also taught according to the capacity of the individuals when they develop. The, then the fourth Vajra statement, the Buddha turned the three wheel of the Dharma. These three wheel, the Buddha turned the Dharma teachings according, according to the one individual to go step by step. Uh, five parts, a part of accumulation, part of preparation, then the special insight part, and part of meditation, and final, the, the part of perfection. Also, 10 Bhumis, you know, from first Bhumi level to the 10th Bodhisattva's Bhumi, and then to cross that boundary and attend the Buddhahood. So these teachings are taught according to the individual to progress step by step towards the enlightenment. So relation to this now, we are turning into this, the short, this, uh, as I mentioned, the prescription and uh, as, as mentioned, the prescriptions and prescription, the, the, their mode of abiding. So yesterday we have touched the, uh, until the, uh, all the composite phenomena are uh, this. All the composite phenomena are in permanence, subject to change, as we know. But knowing is one thing, but bringing into the heart is different. Knowing is intellectual. You can prove intellectually with a lot of reason with the validities, you know. So this proves this, this proves this, this proves this, that, and you can debate for a lifetime. But if you don't practice it, it doesn't mean so much. It's like studying the mathematic. Uh, you can calculate all the through the mathematic. You can prove, you know, with a scientific way. But if you don't practice, it's not so relevant. No. What we need is we need to, it need to practice. Now when the food is met and delicious food is met, that is good, but it's, it's not relevant if you don't eat it. If we eat it, then it solves the problems of the hunger. When you are hungry, then eat the delicious food and it, the purpose is fulfilled. Likewise, the Buddha's teaching, what Buddha taught, is to free every sentient beings from the suffering. So to free all sentient beings from the sufferings, you have to practice. You know? uh, just is uh, we can prove this, 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 as mentioned, but if you don't practice, then we don't get the benefit. Therefore, uh, well is in permanent. That means everything's turns to the natural. What that means, everything's changing moment to moment. And what that means is there's no anything that we can attach on, we can rely on changing, you know. Sometimes your best friend becomes an enemy. Your enemy can become your best friend. Uh, sometimes very, impressive person, wonderful person, turned into such an ugly person. You see, everything's very turns to the nature. So therefore, what teaches us, don't grasp it. Let go, no? Don't attach to it. Just live your life that way. So that what that helps is it brings the peace in the mind. You know? The real peace, the more real peace will come from that. You know? The when there's a peace in your mind, 
is a, there's a happiness. So happiness is the flavor of the peace. See, this peace depends on the wisdom, not emotional. Sometimes when you get, when you meet your very good friend, then there's no fear. Oh, you just, you know that person so well, and you just feel so friendly, and you feel so peace. But that peace is very temporary at that moment. You know. When that person goes, leaves, there's no peace, you see. The peace goes with that person. It doesn't stay with you, you know. So the peace here in the mind is mind free from all this duality, you know, grasping. It's called, you know. So that we learn from the impermanence, as I mentioned, to I described the Milarepa's song, you know. So the, sometimes it's good to read this uh, story of those great masters. And I'm sure you have you know these eight holy concerns. You know? Eight holy concern is, you know, uh, we want wealth. Nyeba, it's called Nyeba, Tomnakawa. It uh, gives you joy when you uh, get the wealth. Then when you don't get the wealth, not happy. So this between this is one of the eight worldly concern. And then the fame, everybody wants the fame famous. If somebody said this person is wow, wonderful, worthwhile to praise all this, 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 and if that become person famous, they say so happy, so I'm so famous. <laughs> if somebody criticizes that person, and then you are not happy, you see, because you are attached to that. When you are attached to that, then when somebody praises, you are you are happy. If somebody criticizes, you are not happy. So if you have no attachment to this, no attachment to wealth, no attachment to the fame, whether you get wealth, there's nothing to attach. Whether you don't have the wealth, there's nothing to fear about it. So all this, so we, in the samsara, so everywhere, all over the world, the people's interest is the eight worldly concern. You see, regardless who they are, believer, non-believer, rich, poor, you know, anybody, everybody in the world, our interest is the eight worldly concerns. So we need to reduce that attachment, purify that. And then our interest, which you know, shift that interest from eight worldly concern to the enlightenment. You know? See, this is the point, the important is, if we are totally concerned about the eight worldly, eight worldly concern, then we will have no interest for enlightenment. You know? What that does is then all the mental afflictions, delusions manifest, you see. It surrounds all in our life. And then that, the effect of that is only suffering. That's why I say one should make every effort to shift our interest to the eight worldly concern to the enlightenment or the Buddhahood. Because uh, what it means is, you know, our interest in the eight worldly concern is also for peace and happiness. You see, you want to be happy when you're famous. You want to be happy when you're rich, you know, 
See, I'm rich, so I'm happy, you know. I'm rich, I'm so happy because I'm so famous. Everybody likes me, like they love me, they like me, you know. So no. <laughs> then that shows if somebody criticizes that person is not happy, you see. <laughs> So that's reality, you know. It's not a culture of some country or some people. It's the culture of the samsara, you know. Whole in the samsara is about that. So the first, these are very important to take care of. Otherwise, if you pick this dharma, you be you stay in the eight worldly concern. You no, know? you go to retreat. So I'm, I'm going to retreat. If somebody hear that I'm the retreat, then maybe they will praise me, you know? <laughs> they will respect me, you know? <laughs> so even Dharma practice can become the real direct cause for the eight worldly concern. So you see chanting mantra, saying prayers are not necessarily uh, for the enlightenment, you no? Know? So say this can be cause for the samsara. That's where Gambupa mentioned, if you don't practice Dharma according to the meaning of the Dharma, that can be lead to the samsara or lead to the law realms, he said, you know. So that's why first we have to have this, such a motivation, pure, it's called pure motivation. Even though they said, so you, with the pure motivation, you do this, 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 that, that, but sometimes still our, the mental afflictions are so stubborn, you know? they're very stubborn, <laughs> very difficult breakthrough. So we have to repeat this again and again. You know? uh, otherwise, yeah, like you go to the temple, say prayers, you know, burn incense, candle, so they say, today I'm here to help me to have a good business. <laughs> and then we burn incense and offer candle. Uh, so, uh, my friend, my family have a good health. May I have a good health, long life. So I pray for this. So all is attached to this life. We're not saying prayers, may everybody free from samsara, may everybody achieve enlightenment. We don't say that prayer so much. When we say this, when you, when you open the text, you know, then you say it, but in the minds, very difficult to, to, to come out, you know, to manifest. So therefore we have to uh, you know, change this the pattern of the samsara towards the enlightenment. You know? So in permanence. When you reflect on the suffering, that means we're not making everything bad, as you mentioned, bad, bad, but it's prepare. You know? Reflect on this suffering. Suffering has a, such a great benefit there when you reflect on. You know? When you look at the suffering, that helps to cultivate great compassion. No. As the other dimension, you cannot cultivate compassion or loving kindness on the piece of rock. Or person who are happy, successful, you don't need to cultivate compassion. They are successful, they are happy, you know. So why you need to say it? May they have all the happiness or free from suffering. No. But when you look deeper in the meaning of the samsara, then you see that everyone is subject of suffering. So there, when you look at the suffering, then it helps you to develop such great compassion. Then suffering is caused. The suffering is not independent. It, just, it does not manifest without cause or from wrong cause or from incomplete cause. You know? 
So we should understand suffering is manifested out of the mental delusion. Look at this. And then, see, it helps us to avoid the cause of the suffering. The cause of suffering. No? It gives us wisdom to see the cause of the suffering, the cause of the samsara. No? And it reduces our arrogance. When you are suffering mentally or physically, you become more humble. So I am suffering. Please help me, you know. <laughs> see. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're not suffering, you won't do that. You are so arrogant. Oh, I am so you know, important person. I am such and such. So our arrogance is strong, powerful. But the suffering helps to reduce that, that, that height, the arrogance. You know, reduces that, makes a real human being. You know? So look, these... So reflect on the suffering is very precious. It's a source of the wisdom. It, it helps you to develop more compassion. So that's why so we need to reflect on the, uh, the subject of suffering. In the world, there are so many people who are aging. As yesterday, there were some uh, questions about, you know, we call dementia, you know, forgetting this because when you age, then these things happen. You forget very easily, you know, very unstable mind. Cannot maintain the mind in the right place. So dharma, is the only one can help you directly, you know. But it needs time to adjust that kind of habit. It doesn't come like a taking a pill, like a switch a button, you know. Due to this, they, now the, the technology is so much, we just push the button and everything just turn, you know. But the mind is not that easy. You, you know, you need a long time to it to to uh, to get adjust to that. It's just, it doesn't happen. Just push, you know. So we want to be dead, you know. Just push and then say, "Oh, okay, Dharma works," you know. Otherwise, you say, Dharma doesn't work. <laughs> Dharma works, but it's It depends on individual how much interest you are you have. Uh, how much habituated yourself into these practices. So these are the very important tip that you should, we should have in our life, why Dharma is so necessary, not just as a Buddhist, no, not just as a spiritual. Dharma is, is, is for everybody, you know, so those are interested, not interested, but they, in reality, they need Dharma, you know. Then as a, uh, also as mentioned you know, about this. So when you look at this in the samsara, in the samsara as mentioned, we interest eight worldly concerns that our, pro, our whole object the objective goal of in the samsara is to, through these eight worldly concern, we want to have peace and happiness. But in reality, there is not, you see. This is just you now taught by Buddha, not just taught by Buddha, all the great followers, they have went through that, examined that, no, and they're totally convinced about these things. So they also repeated the same thing what Buddha said. No. So that shows in the samsara there's no refuge. We do take refuge here and there 
when you are hungry, you take refuge in your lunch. <laughs> See, you know. <laughs> when you get headache, you take refuge in the uh, pill to get rid of the headache. You know, as you know. Mm. So they are this, but they are very temporary. You know. So there comes the refuge. So I read today the refuge here now. Now, <clears throat> the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha are the changeless, permanent places of refuge. You who desire emancipation from the suffering abyss, strive to take refuge in them from the bottom of your heart, you see. Now Buddha, as you know, Buddha was say Buddha, the word Buddha means fully purified and fully awakened. Purified all mental obscurations. There are many different le levels of the obscurations of the mental afflictions, obscuration of the person's self, Pers uh, the obscurations of the, the phenomena self. The many different layers of creations. So all these layers of the creations are fully purified. Mind is completely pure. Then at the same time, you know, all this awakeness, all the excellent qualities are achieved. All the wisdom, knowing everything, like say, Buddha has 10 powers, 10 strengths, you know. Listen. <clears throat> 10 strength, one of the first is uh, knowing everything, knowing, you no, know? right from the wrong, without any, uh, misunderstanding, totally, you know, distinctively, precisely, then Buddha can tell what's right and wrong, you know, that kind of wisdom. So these types of wisdoms that Buddha have achieved. For fearlessnesses, there's no fear for himself, there's no fear for others, that means when Buddha said, I am enlightened, that means purified everything and all the excellent culture achieved. There's nobody can come say you are not enlightened. In the world, there's nobody can come say you are not enlightened. You know? See. When Buddha said, I purified all obscurations, there's nobody can come to say, Buddha, you are not purified. You are not purified this, 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 that. When Buddha said, I know everything, then nobody can come say, you don't know this, this, this. So Buddha has no fear to tell that. It's not out of arrogance, out of pride, but he was telling what he has accomplished. No. So this is what Buddha is about. No. From that, then as I mentioned other days, the compassion to the sentient being is so much, you know. The, no. the suffering of the sentient beings are intolerable but no choice, suffering is so much, unbearable, but no choice, have to bear, no? So Buddha sees that directly to the sentient beings, and he has that kind of great compassion. From that compassion, then wisdom, that what he accomplished, then he talked to those all Dharma teachings. 
other days I mentioned, no? As you see, the Four Noble Truths, the suffering, you should know the suffering, because we don't know suffering. We don't want suffering, but we don't know all the suffering. So, no? Therefore, we repeat the same bad habit. We cannot change the bad habit. That's called deeply rooted habit. It's called inveterate propensity. It's difficult to you know, uproot. Because of this suffering continues. Even Buddha who has that kind of great wisdom, compassion, and he tries his best. Sometimes Buddha said, I better not give the teachings. I should stay quiet. Why I need to bother others? No. <laughs> Sometimes he feels that. And then again continues because there's no other alternative. So give this, then repeat the same teachings. No? So that's Buddha, who, who, to whom we are taking refuge. No? So Buddha is infallible, inexorable, the, the object of the refuge. Infallible, the object of refuge. Then from that wisdom, they talk the Dharma teachings. Dharma teachings, you know, there are two uh, teachings. No? First, explanation. Second, to practice. Color, lung and to. Lung is transmission. All the teachings transmitted. And to is realization. What is talked that should be realized, not just belief, but follow the path and realize. If you don't practice them, not so much benefit. Sometimes you say, oh, you explained Dharma so well, so good. Thank you so much, you know, but then finish. <laughs> Our mind is just keep the same pattern, same bad habit. <laughs> As much as it's like a rubber band, you can bend the rubber, you know, extend and release, go back to the same. Nothing is changed. See? So to change that pattern is called practice meditation. You have to look to yourself you know, in your own mind. You know, how much I have repeated this same pattern. You know, that is the things that we need to renounce. So you, know, you, you have heard of renounce, you know, uh, Buddhist taught to renounce. No, I, I'm, I'm not ready yet to renounce, you know, <laughs> sometimes we say, you know, that means I'm not ready yet to renounce the cause of su suffering, you know. I want to suffer, you know. <laughs> Still, I don't have enough uh, suffering. I want to continue my suffering, so I'm not ready yet to renounce, you know. So sometimes we have a misunderstanding. People think renounce means renounce your eating, your you no, know, renounce your happiness. You know? <laughs> so we should know these things. Renounce means renounce the cause of suffering. Renounce the ignorance, attachment, aversion, pride. Then. Ten non virtues. So renounce those, the cause of suffering for oneself and others. That's called renounce. So in the Dharma teaching, what you will find is what to be practiced 
and what to be renounced, what to, what to be abandoned. No. So don't do this, 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 these things means they are cause of suffering. The Buddha talked with such great compassion. No. These individuals in the samsara, they don't know about these things, the cause of suffering. So if I tell no, Buddha, if I tell then what not to do is, is the cause of suffering, then don't do these things. And do these things like practice of generosity, respect others, respect others' life, you know, and all those good things, they are the cause for peace and happiness at this moment and for the future, and finally for the enlightenment. So practice loving kindness, compassion, as I mentioned the other day, it will come later, you know. But those are, you know, everyone has love and compassion. But we need to develop them, you know, make it more purified. So water is already pure. This is a purified water, you know. <laughs> so purify our mind. That's what is, our mind itself is pure but we need to purify the, all the obscurations. So to this, the Dharma is taught. So it's, Dharma is the refuge, you know. When you make offering, uh, you have heard of, you see, Domba Lame Sanje Rinpoche, you know that? No, no, I, I have, I have. Domba Lame Sanje Rinpoche, you know. Domba means teacher, the answer pass, the teacher is the Buddha, Tomba Langameba. Unsurpassed teacher is the Buddha. Joba. Joba means protector. The protector, unsurpassed protector is the Dharma. Dharma is not something there to protect you. The Dharma is there something in your heart when you practice them is the real protector. Just say like 10 virtue. When you, the 10 virtue you see, is universal. Everybody respect that. Regardless the religion belief, or even without religion. I think in all the different countries, they have constitutions. Those all constitutions are based on the 10 virtues because they are cause for peace and happiness. You need your country, peaceful country. That's why don't take life, don't steal, don't rob, don't rob others, you know? Um, don't create obstacles, don't create problem in the country. See, so these are 10 virtues are the constitution of the whole in samsara, okay? We need that constitution. <laughs> okay. Make that happen. That's the basic fundamental teachings of the Buddha. All the teachings are built from that. You no know, explanation of that. So, so that's what's called refuge, take refuge in the Dharma. And Sangha. Take refuge in Sangha is the God, God the, who guide us. Highly accomplished great masters, they are follower, follower of the Buddha, Sangha. No? So they are example of the successful practitioner or successful practice. We take their example, we follow them, these great masters who are highly accomplished. You know, we take their life as our example to practice Dharma. These great Sanghas, they follow Buddha and they practice the Dharma and how they have accomplished in their life. And for us, they are the 
our guide. So that's why we take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. That's why it's called here, it's a changeless. When we take refuge in them, it never changes. And they are permanent, it's mentioned permanent. It's not permanent something, uh, phenomena exists without change, it's not that. This permanent means virtue is virtue, always the virtue is permanent, it's changeless. No? Actually, Buddha is the ultimate refuge in the jewel ornament of liberation at the, at the section of the refuge you read there. You no, know, the quotation from Uttara Tantra. Tambe tondo doa is. Damn the Sanjay Nyashita. Tambe tondo. Don't tambe tondo. In order to achieve the ultimate enlightenment, Buddhahood, the refuge is the Buddha. Damn the Sanjay Nyashita. Only the Buddha is the ultimate refuge. Then Buddha is the Buddha. Buddha is the embodiment of Dharma. So, so Tuba, Tuba is the Buddha. Muni, Buddha is the embodiment of Dharma. Tuba, Chuch, Kuchin Chir, Chuch, Dharma. Dhammakaya, Buddha, Dhammakaya is the ultimate Buddha. The so Sangha. The ultimate Sangha becomes the Buddha. So Buddha is the Buddha. Buddha is the Dharma. And Buddha is the Sangha. So Buddha is the embodiment of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So that we take refuge. That's Madhurya, Buddha Madhurya. To know, describe that in the Uttara Tantra. No. So that's our, we take refuge, not to samsaric beings. Where there's no Buddha Dhamma Sangha, then there are individuals that take refuge in the, now the, sometimes they say in the, Big giant tree. They say there is a, such a, our ancestor deities are there, so we take refuge in them. Or sometimes you say uh, there's a big mountain, you no, know, with a rocky big mountain. Or in this, there's some very special deities. Our ancestor deities are there. We take refuge in them. Sometimes they have a beautiful leg, you know, such a beautiful leg. So this beautiful leg possessed, uh, uh, abides the, uh, our ancestral deities, this, 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 we take refuge, no? So they don't have Buddha Dharma Sangha, you see, no? So Buddha Dharma Sangha is the, our ultimate refuge for enlightenment, to free from samsara. That's why I say, no? He said, you who desire emancipation from this suffering abyss, we are all in a state of suffering, samsara, confusion, to, from, to, to free from this kind of confusion, delusion. The only Buddha Dhamma Sangha are the ultimate refuge. So we so when you take refuge, you take refuge. I take refuge in the Buddha, Buddha, Dharma, Kaya. I take refuge in Dharma, Dharma, the Goba, the cessation of the Dharma. Dharma of, Dharma of the Nirvana, you take refuge. Sangha of the, you know, the, those great Buddhasattvas who are highly accomplished, who are in the eighth, ten, eighth, tenth bumi, we take refuge in them. Bring in our heart, 
and take refuge, you see. So refuge, uh, I repeat this usually, you know, uh, Miller Abba said, I take refuge to Buddha, I take refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha as the outer refuge, as an example, historically, it's a Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Then he said, I take refuge in the Guru, Yedam Deity, and Dakini as an inner refuge. So the inner refuge is your mind. Your true nature of the mind is your Guru. Outer Guru is just an example. It's just help you to see the reality nature. Ultimately, you take refuge, your inner mind, the, the pure mind. You rely on that. That's the Buddha, you know. And that is the Yidam deity. And that is the Dakini. Then Milareva said, I take refuge in the chakra channel uh, bindu you know, as a secret refuge. So chakra is a dhamakaya. This channel uh, is nirmana kaya. And the bindu is a sambhok kaya. So Buddha, dhamakaya, sambhok kaya, nirmana kaya. I don't know, I take refuge in them. No. Then he said, I take refuge in the emptiness, appearance, and inseparable nature. That's the ultimate refuge, he said. I take refuge in them. I achieve the satisfaction. And if you take refuge in them, you will achieve as well that satisfaction. So this all, you see, they, you can understand, this all are nothing but to purify our mental affliction. Our mental affliction is very complicated, as I mentioned, you know, very complex. Just like you see your internet. How much the internet is now, you can see, so, complex. Your whole world is in your hand in the smartphone. And there's information, endless, one after another. Those are, there are some individuals, they, the whole day they spend in the internet in your hand, the phone in your hand, one after another, one after another, endless. So your mind is like that, you <laughs> see. Exactly our mind is like that. So to purify that complexity, Dharma is the only method to solve that problem, suffering in this 21st century, see. Dharma taught in the you know, 2000, 2,500 over 65 years or more. The teaching is still so fresh, but we, we, the difficulties now, it's very difficult to explain these things, to teach these things and to practice this. That's what I say, when you spend more teachings, studying, go to retreat, study, practice together, no? Then you understand that from the, from the depth of the meaning, not from just outside. Because your mind is so complex, but the, the complexity of the mind is reduces the meaning of the Dharma manifests. So your whole being, your nature itself is a dharma, when you realize. So that's why Milareva said, when I know one thing, 
I know everything. See? When he, Milarepa, you know, revealed the complicity of the mind, that one thing, he revealed whole universe of samsara nirvana. So there's no end of teachings that he can teach without stopping. That's the quality of the mind, as I mentioned. So that to, to, to see that the three refuge, the refuge is the uh, principal path that we take refuge in them now until you become Buddha. Refuge is not something you practice some, you know, uh, then you just live, live there. No, refuge, you go all the way to Buddhahood. <coughs> Sometimes you, you know, there's a kind of what you say. Uh, and those who go to retreat and you do, do frustration. When somebody done like 100,000 frustration with the refuge, they say, I have finished refuge. <laughs> this is very strange, you know. <laughs> You can't finish refuge, you know. <laughs> so I have done refuge. Huh? <laughs> start with the refuge at the beginning. Right at the beginning, you start with the refuge. Just saying, Sanjay Chotan, Sanjay Sonamla, you know, you start prayer that. And then any practice you do, then all the way to, to Buddhahood. Then when you achieve Buddhahood, then you become the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. You can't finish refuge, you know. If you finish refuge, it's very strange, you know. <laughs> I don't know what you're practicing. <laughs> uh, so, refuge is start with the so, so refuge is not a, as a Buddhist culture or Buddhism, it's the method. So it's a cause, we should understand. It's a cause, a cause to free from uh, samsara, you no, know, to free from samsara. Now says, we use this Buddha as a Sanskrit, it's a Sanskrit word, you no. Know? In other words, fully awakened enlightenment. Anybody can achieve enlightenment. Anybody can become Buddha. So Buddha. Sometimes we say Buddha Dharma Sangha is only for Buddhists. No, Buddha Dharma Sangha is for everybody, you know, for every sentient beings. We should reflect that, understand that. No. Even who don't believe in a religion, they also need Buddha Dharma Sangha. They need wisdom, you know. They want peace and happiness, you see. And they want to free from suffering. For that reason, they need the Buddha Dharma Sangha. It's the reality, it's the cause. But we need to have a skill how to express these things. You know? We need an experience how can share this wisdom to all others? That is the, the Gongjik teaching explains, you see. That's why Gongjik is not just a single intention. It's the intention of everything, okay? <laughs> complete, we should say, one complete intention, okay? <laughs> Oh, uh, so how we are doing? You are doing good? Are you enjoying the Dharma? <laughs> Close for enlightenment? <laughs> I'm sure you are now closer, closer for enlightenment. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I'm taking a lot of time on this. Okay. Uh, to, to strive to take, ref, uh, to take refuge in them from the bottom of your hearts. Moral conduct is the cause of attaining the, uh, of the attaining the higher realm and definite goodness. Make it a priority to engage in the vinaya sphere of the abandoning the ten non virtuous actions. So, so here, uh, this, this, uh, the vinaya moral ethics, you see, what it means is. Look at the, as, as I mentioned before, the demarcation. Demarcation between peace and happiness and the suffering. So, even to reborn in the higher realm, in the precious human life to achieve this, we need these 10 virtuous practice. So, the practice is, they are called precepts, you know, there's a lay precept, an ordained uh, precept. The lay precepts, you see the five precepts. So those are not just a precept or some kind of like a vow. Some people, they have, they're afraid. I'm not yet ready to take the precepts. <laughs> I wait. <laughs> you feel like you are trapped, you know. <laughs> when you take precepts, then you feel you are trapped, you know. If you don't take the precept, you feel, oh, I'm free, you know. I'm free what to do, what not to do. Actually, if you take the precept, then you are, you are making free yourself from the suffering, you know. When you're free from the suffering, you are really free, you know. <laughs> well, in the suffering and creating the cause of suffering, all these things, you are not free, you know. <laughs> you are you're confined, you know. You're trapped in the, you know, you're trapped in the cocoon and you know, confined. And then there's no freedom. So this Vinaya is like five precept is Vinaya. And as you mentioned, look at this five precept. Not taking life, you see, means not harming others' life, yourself. Not stealing or not things from others. Not engaged in the sexual misconduct, you see. I said, not telling lies, especially spiritual lies. Not intoxicates. Look at this, you see. We in the samsara suffering from these lack of, we should say lack of these precepts. Harming each other, killing each other, you know. Now how much suffering is there? How much atrocity is there? People are crying, you know? they are desperate. When there's killing involved, you see. It's not a Buddhist, something Buddhist thing. You see, in the universe, in the world, everywhere. You know, robberies, stealing things. Nobody appreciates that, you see. It's universal. Then people said the, the attachment, the desire becomes so strong, then sexual misconduct and so much suffering is there. Confusion, envy, no, oh, jealous. Yes, you see, a lot of sufferings involved there. Anger, <laughs> no. Then telling lies, deceiving others. Nobody appreciate that. See, 
especially spiritual lies. You have not realized this. Uh, I am. I saw Buddha. I saw this. This. I saw Jesus. You know. You know. No. I saw enlightened beings deceiving others. And then it becomes a cult member. You know. <laughs> After some, there's a lot of confusion. You know. So those the basic, you no, know, a lay practitioner, everybody, the monk nuns, all practitioners, based on these practices, avoiding these all cause of suffering, and engage in the cause for peace, harmony from there. So this starting from there is the peace. When you achieve the Dhammakaya, it's the ultimate peace. So that's what's called you know, the, um, the moral conduct is the cause for cause of attaining the higher realm, even in the samsara, to achieve the precious human lives. Sometimes we say, what kind of prayer I can say to, to be reborn as a human life? You keep the five percent. That's the direct cause to reborn in the higher realm. You don't need to do the definition, no? You don't need to say some prayers, but keep those five precepts perfectly. And then there's no fear, no doubt to be reborn as a, a precious human life. Uh, then for enlightenment, so they say, say higher realms and definite goodness means complete enlightenment, Buddhahood. So the Vinaya is the foundation of all the practices. Right from the beginning, all the way to the Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. So therefore, so make it a priority to, to engage in the Vinaya sphere means complete. Don't look down. Some individuals say Vinaya is for lesser vehicle, for Hinayana, they say, but Vinaya is for all, for Hinayana, for Mayana, for Vajrayana, for every Yanas, okay? <laughs> From the fussy vehicle to the ultimate vehicle, the Vajra, the Vinaya, Vinaya is appreciated. Respected and Buddha talked in that way. Mm -hmm. So abandoning the ten non -virtue, virtuous act actions. And then as all one's own happiness arises from others. I explained that briefly yesterday. Mm -hmm. Desiring others' benefit is the cause for one's own happiness. So authentically practice the four immeasurables of love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Yeah. Oh. As, a, as yeah, this as I think yesterday I mentioned uh, quite a bit about this. Look at our life. You no, know, all that what we enjoy is the products of others. The other people made such a great effort to produce the best quality, and we enjoy those their products. So our enjoyment, that what we enjoy things is the products of others. So we need to appreciate that. We need to acknowledge this. Understand this. No. Even in the samsara, not in the dharma, even in the samsara, 
the law of compulsion, as mentioned, you know. Everyone is sustained, they're alive because of the love and compassion. Like even as you mentioned, the bird who lays the egg and then hatches, <laughs> hatches the egg but so delicately, so gently, out of love, out of compassion. And that how egg is hatched and comes out the chicken. The mother sacrifices all the hardship to protect her offspring out of love and compassion. Even small bugs who know nothing still this expression of love and compassion. Out of hatred, they cannot survive. Out of negligence, they cannot survive. But the mother sacrifices all her life, you know, and then brings up all this. Look at the, the country, the leader is more responsible. The leader, is, the leader has more compassion. The leader takes care of the people of the country. Everybody admire, respect. They elect again and again. They vote again and again. Because the, the, the person takes responsibility. Even in the politics, in the war, even there's no dharma, but who cares the people, people appreciate. Look at this. We are in the society. We cannot leave one individual without other support. One become famous because the people. You know, if you stay in a desolate place, a desert where there's nobody, then you see how much you can become rich, how much you become famous. You, know, <laughs> you, can, you can shout in the, in, in the desolate place, I'm so rich, I'm so famous. <laughs> There's no one to, you know, who, who, who say things for you, you know, because there's nobody. So we all, the business people, have to understand this. The business become very rich because of the people purchase their product. The individual becomes billionaires because the people. So they should understand about that. They should know how to share with others. Mm -hmm. So this is not just only in the Dharma world. This is in the general, in the some sort of world. And you see, Our thought, our practice as a Dharma, so the Dharma practitioner now we are taught how to develop our love and compassion. It's because of the sentient beings, you can develop love and compassion. That's the other dimension, you know. You cannot develop love and compassion on the piece of rock or in the piece of stick, you know. You develop love and compassion even to your cat, dog, horses, and the people around you. And who gets the benefit? You get the benefit. The practitioner gets the benefit. As soon as when there's a love, 
compassion in your heart, there's a peace. So, so we should acknowledge this, see this, and meditate, practice, you see, no? And, yeah, this mention, you know, desiring others' benefit is the cause of one's own happiness. That's what I mentioned, you know. One becomes the Buddha because of the sentient beings. Buddha practice generosity, perfected the practice of generosity, moral ethics, patience, you know, dealing with other people and attend the Buddhahood. In the life of Buddha, you say, when Devadatta comes round, challenge Buddha, making, creating obstacle to Buddha's activities, and Buddha practice so much about the patience. Mm. And big Buddha become more famous. Still, we are talking about you know. Milareva also said his aunt and uncle are the very important in his life for the Dharma practice. Without them, that uh, he won't become won't become like that Milareva. The aunts and uh, the aunts and uncle took advantage, take, took everything. You know, became like such a bitter enemy. And Miller had grown up from within that. And then he practiced the bodhicitta and achieved the enlightenment. He said, I'm so grateful of their support. So everything become a good support for your Dharma practice. So that's practice of love and compassion. As mentioned, we do have the capital, the love and compassion, capitalize from that, and then increase the practice farther, farther to all the sentient beings. So, okay. Uh, now from this, we should finish next one. Then after the four limitless practice, all this, uh, <clears throat> called four limitless or four immeasurable practice this. And there's so much to say, but if you read the Jewel Ornament of Liberation at the section of the love and compassion, Kambupa describes so beautifully. So please read there, read that book. The next is what said, the soul, the soul cause of at obtaining the Buddhahood and of any of the peace and happiness of samsara and nirvana is bodhicitta itself. See, bodhicitta is the highway towards enlightenment, the consummate path for the enlightenment of all session beings. So bodhicitta develop on the, on the base on love and compassion. You desire for peace and happiness every session beings. You desire everybody to free from suffering, but sentient beings are not, don't have all the peace and happiness. They don't, they are not free from suffering. Now what we should do, say, attend the Buddhahood is the ultimate method to solve all the problems, confusions, cause of suffering. So for that reason, we need to cultivate Bodhicitta. So I want to attend the enlightenment, the awakening state, for the benefit of all sentient beings. 
also we cultivate that. That's called first aspiration bodhicitta. Once you achieve or cultivate that aspiration bodhicitta, then you start the action. It's called the action bodhicitta, engagement bodhicitta. Follow the path. Because right at the beginning, when you cultivate your bodhicitta to attain Buddhahood, then you are, you are not Buddha yet. No, we are not Buddha yet. So now to become Buddha, we have to practice the six parameters step by step. So to cultivate bodhicitta, now this coming uh, weekend, we have that program. They need a lot of causes and conditions. You know? This universal mind you know, to reveal that mind, we need such a great courage, strength, and such a kind of you know, uh, view, powerful view, like you know, those people who, who involve multi-billion businesses, they have a lot of you know, discussions how to engage, you know, to how to make the profit from their business, you know, how to advertise all this. They work so hard day and night, they think they just, uh, they would call their, uh, uh, the storming brand, the storming brand, they call you know, the make how to use your brand. Now, Bodhicitta is such a great business, you know, uh, to gain the enlightenment, okay, to make the profit of the, all the peace and happiness that exists in the world, okay. <laughs> it's such a great business, you know. <laughs> so, to this, then we need uh, accumulation of merit, accumulation of wisdom, all those causes, condition. Uh, then through that, you see, no, uh, as you mentioned here, samsara and nirvana is the bodhicitta itself. Make every effort to generate it in your mind stream. So we have about five minutes, Bodhicitta, uh, this afternoon. Oh, I think we should, uh, uh, it, will, it, looks like it will take a lot of time, but I've, I'll read the next one. <laughs> there is Bodhicitta of aspiration and engagement and unsurpassable ultimate Bodhicitta. So he had divided Bodhicitta into three, just as I mentioned, aspiration Bodhicitta, action Bodhicitta, um, then ultimate bodhicitta, the Dhanatapa Sem, Dhanju Sem. Writing well the steed of perseverance, reach the end of, the, of this path, you know, you write on the, uh, you write on the steed of perseverance. You need great perseverance, uh, joyous effort, to perfect all the six parameters, you know, and then perfect your mind. In other words, to purify all obscurations, mental delusions. You see now, all the practices right from the beginning to the end are only work is to purify the mind all the mental delusions. They are the root cause of suffering. No? Every sentient beings. At other day, I in the Nagarjuna's commentary on Bodhicitta mentioned, you know, look at all the suffering in the samsara we have. It's because we harm sentient beings. Harming the sentient beings, then the result is suffering. So whether it's action, arising, aspiration bodhicitta, action bodhicitta, 
ultimate bodhicittas this all we practice to purify all the levels of the different obscurations step by step we should make understand that not just a spiritual thing this bodhicitta is again is a cause for enlightenment it's not just buddhist belief it's not just a buddhism it's the direct cause for the buddhahood for the enlightenment so please see that way so i must cultivate bodhicitta you know i must do all these good practices i'm so fortunate i have this precious human life and i have those teachings instructions very precise now i should take the responsibility this is for my own benefit you know um, get rid of the, all your doubt fears following the dharma teachings sometimes you you have a lot of fear if i practice this what what will happen to me you know or something will something will happen to me maybe i maybe i lose this maybe i lost this you know there's a lot of fear there's a lot of reservation we have so get rid of all those uh, reservations just need a courage courage is based on wisdom and compassion and build go go forward on that see uh i remember one say yesterday there was asking question about the, how to kill uh termite 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 you know it's okay to kill termite <laughs> it's okay to kill the termite but we, it is okay also to um to pay the price <laughs> i will say this about the life story of nagarjuna you know nagarjuna is well known nagarjuna lived for long 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 many years and he has a, such a great friend you know the letter nagarjuna's letter to a friend the king the king is the king was very close to nagarjuna Uh, the chip pattern of nagarjuna's life and and nagarjuna also because saw these conditions so he accepted you will not die until i die you know so then the king get the, the the king's wife gave the birth of a, a son who was grown up and the mother made a, such a beautiful cloth to her son beautiful cloth and then mother said now this is my gift to you so you should wear it and the son said this is so precious mom you know i cherish this i will not wear until i become a king you know and then mother said you will never have a, you will never get a chance to become a king because nagarjuna is free of his how long he will live and he accepted your father live as long as nagarjuna so you should wear now you should use it that the son said no i cannot <laughs> no until until i become king i cannot wear this cloth it's so precious then he was not eating food you know he was you know, not getting sleeps as a mother then what should i do to help my son so the only solution is nagarjuna should die you know? <laughs> then nagarjuna dies then his father will die and then he will become king so then mother suggested her son nagarjuna was a great is a great bodhisattva so you should ask him to die so that his father will die and he he will become king so then the child just went the son the, the boy went to the narajana and said mother gave me such a precious cloth and 
I don't know to wear until I become king. But my mother said, you will not die, you know? So what should, what should I do, you know? Maybe, you, maybe Nagarjuna, you should die, you know? So then Nagarjuna recollect his lifespan. Says that, yes, it is now time to die. No, but I will not die with other any conditions. When I was shepherd, many, many years, eons ago, I was shepherd. And then looking after the sheep, goats, and accidentally I killed an insect through the grass, cutting the neck. So I said, I have that karma left. I have to pay that, you know, I have to pay off that karma. So tomorrow you, you should come with a knife and I will give. And tomorrow he came and tried to cut Nagarjuna's neck with a knife. It doesn't go through. In other words, it's like a knife throwing in the sky because Nagarjuna totally realized the emptiness. So then they said, you bring the uh, handful of grass you can cut. And he did, and then he cut the Nagarjuna's neck, you know, head. So even Nagarjuna has to pay that karma. Okay. Now you, you should ask about that. Okay. <laughs> There's no negotiation when you come to karma, okay? Uh, we try to negotiate, you see, what if, you know, like this. So that is our karma, we have to pay respect. It's not a Buddhist belief, it's universal reality nature. The causality of the universe is happens to the Buddha, to the lowest sentient beings. That's why Milarepa said, emptiness is easier to understand than the causality of the karma. Only Buddha's wisdom can capture, capture the total meaning of the karma, not uh, just in general, no, individuals. So this just extra, just, uh, I, I thought to say this, you know, to share this story. So since we are really interested in the Dharma teaching and Dharma is coming in the, well, in the West well, so we should have real good understanding. Sometimes when there's no not clear, explanations, then we just, you know, it's, oh, it's okay, it's okay, do that, it's okay, you know. Then a lot of okay, okay, okay. Then the Dharma is watered down. And Dharma is not presented as it is, as that you need it. You know? We need really a sincere practitioner. So therefore, so in the, in the U.S. we have, you know, the, in the Constitution, so no one is above the law, isn't it? So likewise, no one is above the karma. <laughs> Even Buddha is under the rule of the karma. See, for our own benefit, this is our own benefit. We need to use our own wisdom, you know, our sense of this uh, understanding see this and practice as much as possible, then you get the benefit. Then we can help others to benefit. Okay, so <clears throat> yesterday um, I was, my watch was a little bit kind of twisted. <laughs> so I, it went about one hour extra, you know. <laughs> Today I put the right my watch in the right direction. <laughs> so this is time now. So first, please take a deep 
breathe uh, inhale fully and exhale now please reflect what we went through this morning or in any time at the afternoon or whatever or just reflect the causality and how to purify the mind how to use the dharma as a direct tool to uproot our attachment, our delusions, and we should really rejoice from your heart. So I'm so fortunate receiving this wisdom, these teachings. Now I really understand the Dharma. It's not so easy because of our mental afflictions are strong. But now I have the tool. I can work. I have the goal towards the enlightenment. I have the tool in my hand to practice these Dharma teachings. So just appreciate, rejoice. And then please say the dedication prayers. And to say, or oh, I say, yeah, good. Glorious. Mm. Okay. Glorious, holy, venerable. Precious, kind root and lineage lamas, divine assembly of yidams, deities, the assembly of Buddhas, bodhisattvas, yogins, yoginis, and dakinis, dwelling in the ten directions, please hear my prayer. May the virtues collected in the three times by myself and all sentient beings, samsara and nirvana, and the innate root of virtue not result in the eight worldly concerns, the four causes of samsara or rebirth as a Shravaka or Prateka Buddha. May all mother sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me and mine, obstructors who harm, misleading maras and the hordes of demons, experience happiness, be separated from suffering and swiftly attain unsurpassed, perfect, complete and precious Buddhahood. By the power of this vast root of virtue, May I benefit all beings through my body, speech, and mind. May the afflictions of desire, hatred, ignorance, arrogance, and jealousy not arise in my mind. May attachment to fame, reputation, wealth, honor, and concern for this life not arise for even a moment. May my mind stream be moistened by loving kindness, compassion, and bodhicitta. And through that, may I become a spiritual master with good qualities equal to the infinity of space. May I gain the supreme attainment of Mahamudra in this very life. May the torment of suffering not arise even at the time of my death. May I not die with negative thoughts. May I not die confused by wrong view. May I not experience an untimely death. May I die joyfully and happily in the great luminosity of the mind as such and the pervading clarity of Dharmata. May I in any case gain the supreme attainment of Mahamudra at the time of death or in the bardo. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest. And see you at two or at your time. Yeah, thank you so much.